In this short video, I'm going to describe to you what the risk reward ratio is and how we can use it in trading. But before we start, my name is Alejandro Zambrano. I have been trading since 2006. Started out with a real account with about 2,000 euros. I picked up quite a few experiences and I hope I can share some of them with you today. So stick with me. I'm going to try to do my best to show you how I use the risk to reward ratio and how you can use it to improve your trading. Don't forget to like the video and don't forget to subscribe. Let's dig in. So the risk to reward ratio is simply the relationship between your risk and your reward. Say for example that you have a position on and you're happy to risk 1% of your account. So if you lose on that trade, you will lose 1% of your account. On the other hand, with the help of your trading strategy, you know you can make 2 maybe 3% on that trade. So that means that your risk to reward ratio is 1 to 2 or 1 to 3 depending on where you have your take profit level. So why is this important then? Because there are some risk reward ratios that are attainable and then there's some other risk reward ratios that are not as easily attainable. For example, you open a position in the beginning of the day and then you sell it half throughout the day or by the end of the day, then many times your risk to reward ratio is going to be one to one. If you're looking to scalp, then many times you're going to look to maybe make 10 pips and be ready to lose 30 pips. So then you're working with an inverse risk to reward ratio. On the other hand, if you're more of a position trader or a swing trader like I am, then you're looking for maybe two times up to three times risk to reward ratio. And why is it like this? Well, it is like this because the market moves a bit like the sea. It has waves. So you won't usually see the market go from point A to point B in a straight line. Usually on its way to point B, the market would take different stops. It would gain a bit, drop a bit, gain a bit, drop a bit, and then maybe reach your target. So you have those natural corrective movements within trends. And that means that it's very difficult to obtain certain risk reward ratios. Like it is actually quite hard to get a risk reward ratio of three times your risk, even though a lot of people advocate that. But remember, the more short term you are, the more likely that your risk reward ratio is going to be inverted. There are problems with working with an inverted risk reward ratio. If you are doing that, you just have to be right much more frequently. You have to be right maybe up to 80% of the time, which is quite difficult. On the other hand, if you're using a trend following strategy like I am, then you would probably look to make maybe two to three times risk to reward ratios, but you would only be right maybe 45% of the time. What's interesting though is that when you win, you win 3% and when you lose, you would only lose 1% and that's key. Here you're looking at gold. So I like to use classical chart patterns. So what you can see here is that the price was supported by this level, which is 1891, and also limited by this downward sloping trend line. So you're looking at a descending triangle pattern. Based on this pattern, I actually have a target down here, but at the time when I did this, I didn't really anticipate the price to drop that low in gold. Instead, I said, maybe we will drop to 1820. And what I did here, because my strategy requires it, is that I wanted to go short here at the entry level with a stop loss just above the swing high before we break the trend line. And that was giving me a risk of about 87 basis points and a potential return of 3.72%. So 3.72 divided by 0.87 gives you a risk reward ratio of 4.26. Now what's important is I have a very good risk reward ratio before putting on the trade, but I won't always hold the position to for the price to go all the way down here because I know that it is hard for the price to trade all the way down there without touching my stop loss. So what I do many times is actually I just go out slightly before we touch our take profit level. Here's another example. Uh, of another market I traded recently, and it's the Canadian dollar against the Swiss franc. What you're seeing here is a bit of a inverse head and shoulders possibly, or if you just draw a horizontal line here, then you're looking at a rectangle. Difference between the minimum and the maximum gives you the target, which was 79.02. And here, again, I'm looking to buy the breakout there, and I usually put my stop loss at this swing low 
on the day of the breakout. So here I had a risk of uh, about 0.69% uh, versus a potential reward of 5.16. That gives me almost like a silly reward ratio of seven and a half. Now here, I know that for the price to reach that target, it's gonna probably take a full month. I'm not ready to hold the position for a full month. So if I can just go halfway here, I would still get a very, very decent risk reward ratio of slightly less than four times my risk, which is a really, really good trade. So what do you need when you are deciding on risk to reward ratios? Well, as you see here, you have your entry level, you have your stop loss, and you have to take profits. So to derive that, to work that out, you need a trading strategy. Now that's something we're not covering here, but all the different trading strategies have different risk to reward ratios. But as I said before, there are some universal rules or laws out there. Uh, and that is that trading short term, your risk to reward ratio goes to one to one. If you're holding position for a couple of days, maybe you can get two, three times risk to reward ratio. If you're holding the positions for even longer, then you're looking at a uh, risk reward ratio of five, maybe up to 10 times the money. But again, it's very, very difficult to obtain those sort of risk to reward ratios. Another tip I can recommend is to keep a journal. So you can do the classic before and after. So you can take a screenshot of your trade system and your trade idea when you put the position on, and then you would record how that trade idea played out after a couple of days. With that information, of trading, for example, 30 times, you can see, was my entry any good? Was my stop loss any good? Was my TP any good? And then you can try to understand what was the maximum risk to reward ratio that you achieved. For example, I know from my experience that holding the positions until we reach target does not happen too often. So for me, it was actually better to get out sort of halfway or almost at the target instead of holding the position to the actual TP. And that's something you can either learn by experience, but especially if you are new to the market, then it's far more better to actually keep a journal. Like in my case, I kept journals for many, many, many years, but in the last couple of years, because I know exactly what I need to do, I don't track of my trades like I used to do in the beginning. I do of course revisit my trades, especially when I'm having a losing streak, but thankfully, that doesn't happen anymore. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, and don't forget to comment. Let me know what issues you are facing, and I'll try to do my best to do a video to help you. Thank you very much, bye.